Hey Mike, I'm Michael Condry, Sludgehammer's co-founder and game director, and we are the makers of this year's Call of Duty, Call of Duty World War II. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, uh, what role did you have in uh, working on the storyline of the, the campaign mode? Uh, was that primarily your baby, or uh, were you uh, uh, more of like a kind of a supervisory role? Yeah, so this year we bring to life, you know, a Call of Duty World War II storyline that's been three years in the making from Sledgehammer Games. And we follow a squad in the 1st Infantry. Now, it's an original story crafted at Sledgehammer Games that takes you from D-Day and really the beginning of the Allied push of the German force back to the liberation of France and beyond. So we're really excited for hands to get their hands on what's been really three years in the making for us. Awesome, awesome. Um, now I know it's uh, it's been kind of a strange year when it comes to uh, uh, World War II themed games and uh, Nazis in general. Uh, how how has that affected or impacted anything that you guys have been doing with the game? Call of Duty World War II is the first time in 10 years, nearly a decade, that we've had a game set in World War II in the COD franchise. And for that, for us, it was a huge honor, right, to tell this story. And we tell it, you know, for a lot of reasons. One, we want to make sure this never happens again, right? We want to tell it to honor the soldiers, the camaraderie and the sacrifice of the greatest generation. And frankly, we tell the story because they're no longer here to tell it for themselves. So as an inflection point in human history, uh, touched nearly every nation on the planet, nearly a hundred million people perished. You know, it's an important story and we're proud to bring it to life this year. Yeah, so, so my grandfather actually fought in the war and he's only recently started opening up about some of the things that happened to him. Um, did did you have a chance to speak to any vets uh, firsthand, and, and were any of their accounts part of, did you roll it into the story or, or part of what you were doing? Yeah, we have spent an extensive amount of time researching World War II for this game, right? From going to the location, boots on the ground, if you will, to meeting with veterans. And those stories are powerful, like your grandfather. Mm -hmm. Many of us have family members who were touched by the war that fought um, and like your grandfather, a lot of these stories haven't been told before. And what I've really enjoyed with the veterans is there's this humble sense about their sacrifice. They don't view themselves as heroes. They view the people around them. They view themselves in the company of heroes, but they themselves don't view their actions as heroic, which we know the conditions were incredible, right? They were outnumbered, they were outgunned, they were cold, they were hungry, they were tired. And they put their lives on the line to really push back you know, the brink of tyranny. So speaking with the veterans and hearing their stories and reading about what they went through has been really profound and powerful. And we hope that the campaign honors that. Awesome. Uh, so switching to, to multiplayer for a moment, um, uh, I noticed that uh, in multiplayer, I, well, in previous Call of Duty uh, World War II themed games and in other many other World War II themed games, um, uh, like I think Day of Defeat, um, which was a, a Half-Life 2 mod comes to mind. Uh, if you if you played on opposing sides, then one side was allies and one side was was Axis, and that was reflected in in what how they looked and, and what they wore. Um, ha I, I noticed that uh, the uniforms don't really seem to, to have any significant change or, or, or uh, really seem significantly different when you switch from allies to uh, Axis. Um, was, what, I guess, what, what kind of made you not kind of go in that direction this time around? So Call of Duty World War II, we bring to life divisions, and this allows you to sort of enlist in the fantasy of one five iconic divisions in World War II, airborne, infantry, mountain. Um, and each one has a specific uniform that's attached to that. Now, as an allied force, you pick your division and you pick your look, and it's about putting you in the game. Mm -hmm. And so you may play as an allied paratrooper, and you will look like you as a paratrooper. But you're right, we have factions in the game and that's part of Call of Duty and that's part of the construct of the multiplayer experience. So you will play 
as the axis side often. Um, now, when we put you on the axis side, it's still you. It's still your character, your face, your representation of you as a person. But we'll put you in an axis division that represents the division that you picked. So you will, in fact, be um, airborne axis, mm -hmm. and you will look like um, the uniform of an axis, perhaps a German, um, but it's still your face. And then when you come back into headquarters, it's representing your ally enlistment. So your allied character is you, and it's you on the axis side. And while you're playing on the axis side, you're playing in authentic German or axis uniforms that represent that faction. Um, but when you come back to headquarters, you play as your allied character. I guess, uh, I guess maybe I should have worded it a little differently. It seems like you've toned down some of the Nazi regalia. Um, uh, I guess what what kind of led to that decision? Uh, because I know I've played other games in the past where they've just kind of rolled with it. Um, and and do, does that does it bother you that it kind of strays from the the, the reality of it? One of the things that we really wrestled with um, throughout the course of development is how to bring authenticity to life in this conflict. How to represent the atrocities, represent the loss of life, um, and represent the Nazi iconography and the hate symbols that came with that in a way that honors the cause, right, that doesn't shy away from what was really happening, but doesn't glorify it either because there was a lot of life. So in the campaign, it, we took painstaking care to represent that part of the, of the story. And uh, along with other Mm -hmm. challenges like you saw some of the racism with uh, uh, of the 40s represented on the Allied side right you saw the struggle with American Jews being captured those were really powerful moments um, and it was a fine line to cross now with multiplayer it's a different experience it's a social and competitive experience it's a it's a global community with various uh, local laws and regulations that we have to honor so well we are very careful but do include hate symbols in the campaign we didn't felt like that really honored the multiplayer experience um, nor the zombies experience so you won't see uh, those symbols included in those two modes okay. um, so yeah speaking of zombies uh, I guess uh, what uh, obviously the the Nazi zombies was was kind of a, a, an easy direction to go not easy but a, a, a direction that made sense yeah um, I, I noticed that there's a lot of density in terms of uh, um, kind of the meta story that's within the game, uh, and it makes it makes it more than just kind of novelties along the way as you battle off hordes and hordes and zo of zombies. Uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. So World War II Nazi zombies. We're excited to have this live in the world of World War II in our sort of storyline that bridges from campaign all the way through to Nazi zombies. Now, of course, in this mode, we have some creative liberties to be uh, a little bit more fantastical in the storyline, but anchored around a premise that we can all understand. It's the Monuments Men. It's a group of academic scientists um, looking to retrieve stolen art. And they head in deep into Germany to find missing art pieces. Now, as you can imagine, at the tail end of the war, the, the Nazis and the Germans are desperate to push back the Allied forces. So they turn to their, um, their scientists to raise an army of the dead. It's their last chance. And the Monuments Men, they find more than they bargain for as they go deep into what is, you know, the most terrifying uh, zombies experience for the franchise to date. And you got Udo Kier, which was pretty <laughs> impressive, too. Yeah, thank you. You know, the <laughs> cast is fantastic. Udo, as you know, is amazing. And, you know, that experience, you know, based on some of the learnings we had from Dead Space and survival horror in the past, is really meant to give you a different energy to this. You know, the, the cooperative experience is it's a lot of fun. It's very um, frenetic. But you're gonna be scared and we're gonna put you in a place where you know it's it's gritty and it's brutal and it's dark and we think fans are gonna be excited by it awesome um, yeah one last question uh, uh, one of the things that's really become a hallmark of the Call of Duty games in the last several years 
has been it's it's pretty much been like three games in one um more or less unified by a theme though typically the zombies is is kind of off on its own hmm. um uh, do you feel that there were any mechanics or conceits in one mode that you would have liked to have carried more over into another mode uh i guess like the biggest thing that comes to mind this year is the uh, uh health packs uh in the single player mm -hmm. um whereas in multiplayer it goes to the kind of tried and true your health re or just naturally regenerates did you did you try to in incorporate health packs into the multiplayer this time around or were those really just kind of two separate things and you you were you were pretty much just keeping them separate yeah call of duty really is a massive offering like you say each mode in itself is so feature rich that it could be a game on its own now we do want players to move between the modes and enjoy all three because we put a lot of time into this. We have a lot of energy to bring each to something fans will love. And we want you to feel like it's part of the same game. And so with your character in multiplayer, as you move between war, our new mode, and headquarters, you can load straight into zombies and you move back and forth. Um, and we want that to feel natural with the campaign as well. But each mode does offer something that's unique to itself that really you know, lends itself to that experience being great. And in single player, as you mentioned, um, we did transform how you approach battle. And we wanted that to feel vulnerable and um, a little more in the spirit of what Call of Duty um, and World War II meant at the time, which is you don't run straight headfirst into battle like a tier one super soldier. You had to rely on your squad. You're, you had to rely on your medic. These were important parts of the war itself. Now in multiplayer that didn't really fit with us in the way that we wanted, um, nor in zombies as those experiences really are a little more high paced and frequent. Um, you'll see things in single player um, like the introduction of squad mechanics that you know have the spirit of score streaks from multiplayer um, and same with zombies. So in this holistic sort of ecosystem that is Call of Duty World War II, you'll see a lot of things that transfer between the modes. Um, but you'll also see things that are unique to each mode too, um, and you know that's all in service of making it the best experience for fans. Cool. I guess I'm just curious. Did you test health packs in multiplayer at all? We did. You know, we looked at um, health packs in multiplayer and in zombies. We obviously had auto health regen in single player in the beginning too, and we really were trying to offer an experience for each mode that made sense for the kind of energy and the fun that is. Uh, that, that is the hallmark of those modes. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. It's been it. a real pleasure. All right. You have a good one. Yeah.